folks. Well, we are walking uh, somewhat of a trail up here in the mountains of Vermont. And it would appear spring has come a little bit early. It's still the middle of March, uh, but we've had some 60 degree days. Uh, all the snow is gone at the elevation that I'm currently at. And I uh, decided to come up here and get away from the craziness of this virus stuff that's going on, away from people up on this beautiful piece of land today. And the landowner has told me a little bit of information about the person who lived here. I did some of my own research in some old newspapers and uh, should be an interesting place today. I've been walking for about 20 minutes. I think I've got about that left still to go. All right, well, maybe you can see we have arrived. Uh, this area is kind of a mess with downed trees. But uh, you can see here, we have a nice deep cellar, uh, which I'm not sure was the home or not, because there's another more shallow depression over there. The landowner was not related to this person. They just bought the land uh, some years ago. But as they understand it, the person that lived here was a carpenter, he was a furniture maker. And since, you know, we're quite a ways out here, he probably had some livestock here as well. Um, I'm almost wondering if this was the barn. We'll find out. We're gonna do some detecting around here and see what we can find. Man, you know, the amount of these that I find is unbelievable. You would think that these would have been a prized possession. At least I think I know what this is. Yeah, it's pocket watch. <laughs> like I said, you would think that this would be something that, you know, is prized. It's in your pocket. And how the heck do you drop one of these into the ground and lose it? Oh, wait, hang on. There is text on here. All right, hopefully you can make that out. It says New York Standard Watch. Might be a co there at the end. Pretty cool, pocket watch part, a lot of it. Uh, not the case though. You know what, maybe, maybe the inside busted. They kept the outside case, maybe it was silver or gold and they tossed the inside and got, got some new guts for it. Who knows? I love when you can get names off things. Let's keep going. All right, well I just got a iron tool here. Um, there was a brick in there with it. I can't tell if it's a scythe blade, scythe blade, or if it's a draw knife. And if it's a draw knife, that would be really, really cool. Let's see if we can get that. Oh, it's a scythe blade. <laughs> I always uh, confuse the name of this thing, if it's a sickle or a scythe or a scythe. Um, you know, it's the Grim Reaper tool. I was hoping it'd be for a draw knife because, you know, draw knives were used for carpentry and honing logs and stuff. Still cool, you know, it's for cutting uh, grass and hay and all that. Useful tool. I actually, uh, <laughs> I used one of these uh, growing up. Dad made me uh, use one of these to cut the high grass. They work good when they're sharp, that's for sure. Cool find. All right, we um, got a pretty good target in the 70s. Been finding a lot of shotgun shells around this area, so didn't bother getting the camera out, but I should have. We have a little small scent here. And judging by the ring around the outside, I assume it's an Indian head. Let's see that. What do you think? Let's give it a brush here. Yeah, let me uh, clean it up a bit off camera, see what we have here. All right, well, I can't tell for sure. I think that's an 1880-something. Great sign. When there's, where there's one, there's got to be more, right? All right, see what else we can find here. All right, well, 
I just got done saying where there's one, there's got to be more. Closed up my plug on the Indian head penny. Rechecked the hole. That's a low tone in the 50s. Suspect it's like a nickel or something. It sounded like it was close to the surface, like it fell out when I dug the last plug, but I guess it's down, down a ways. Let's see here. Yep, that's sort of what I suspected. I think this is a nickel. Can't quite tell yet. Let's get the toothbrush out again. All right, well, right here, hopefully you can see the Roman numeral five, which is a V, which is why folks call this a V nickel. Fortunately, the bust side with the date is pretty illegible at the moment. You can just make out a bust facing left there. Uh, the date is below. I don't know if we're gonna get this one cleaned up, but we'll try. A little coin spill. We're gonna look around and recheck again, of course. I'll take a six cent coin spill any day. So this building was here through the turn of the century into the 1900s. And because of that, it's on some of these old maps that I have access to where it lists, you know, where they lived, their occupation and their name. And using this man's name, I did some research through some old newspapers because a lot of times you can find like land sales, seeing who he purchased the property from or who he sold the property to. I came across a story, a sad story, in the late 1800s uh, that he and his wife at the time were in an accident, a carriage accident. It didn't say where, probably on their way up here, and she didn't make it. So that's going to put a little bit of a sad spin on the things that we find here today, especially if something is very obviously, you know, belonging to a woman, feminine. Sometimes you come across these sad stories in the research and, you know, it adds extra meaning to the things that we find out here. Folks who uh, watch my videos somewhat regularly know that I find these, you know, late 1800s brass buttons all the time. You know, a dozen of them or so a day. And I've been out here for several hours so far and I have not found one. But anyway, I, I found what I think is a button right here. But it's one unlike I've ever seen before, which is why I'm showing you. You can see in the back there's the little telltale sign that there used to be a shank on there. But this thing weighs probably, what, three or four of the standard buttons usually weigh. It's very heavy. It does appear to be uh, a high-quality brass. You can see the, the nice green patina there. So I don't know, is this a clothes button? I can't, I don't, I can't imagine it is because... If you had a coat of these, it would uh, it would be overly heavy. I'm wondering if maybe it's like an upholstery button. Hard to say, but I thought it was uh, interesting enough to show. It's a new one on me. If anybody has any insight, certainly let me know. It's pretty cool. Check this out. I got a target that was very good and very shallow. Can you believe it? Oh, this one's empty. But it's the frame. I wonder if this goes to the uh, to the other part we found. Let's get it out and see. What do you think? Are we ready? Let's see. <laughs> Look at that. You gotta be kidding me. That's the first. Well, there goes the theory of the insides breaking and wanting to keep the, uh, the frame. 
We just found both parts of it. Perfect fit. This is, you know, a lesser expensive one. It doesn't appear to be gold or anything. I don't think. Hang on a second. I don't know. I rubbed it on my pants. It's shining up pretty good. I don't think it's gold. It rang up way too high in the metal detector. Um, no, I see some green right there. It's just got really good plating on it. Awesome find. You know, every once in a while, I'll find a group of buttons all in one spot or a couple coins all in one spot. There's always one or a few people in the comments of these videos that will say something like, you know, I bet you're digging up a body or a grave or, you know, I bet somebody was attacked and their body decomposed leaving the buttons or the coins. And I know looking around, it seems like we're in the wilderness in the middle of nowhere. But you have to remember, this was somebody's home. This was all open pasture. And I feel like people have this misconception about what people were like 100 or 200 or 300 years ago. Like they were barbarians or something. You have to imagine that if somebody died in this person's field or was murdered, this guy would call the authorities. You know, it's, they wouldn't just leave him out here. People were buried in graveyards, you know, in cemeteries. And as far as I understand it, they were buried deeper than four inches, which is the depth of this stuff that we're finding. I know it's easy to let imagination run away, but you can trust me when I tell you that those coins didn't come from a dead body. More than likely, the owner of this property walking up a little hill, maybe in the winter time, slipped on some ice, coins fell out of his pocket. That simple. Let's see what else we can find. This is a surprise. Uh, I apologize if the wind is blowing in the microphone. It's um, picking up out here a little bit. But I just found something that's uh, like a hundred years older than I was expecting to find here today. Pretty much everything else is from like the late 1800s, maybe just to turn of the century. But um, this, folks who watch my videos probably know what this is. Anybody? That is a shoe buckle shape and fork. Um, this is the inner workings of a colonial era shoe buckle. Oftentimes they're brass at, along with the buckle itself, the buckle frame, uh, but this one is iron. And targets have been a bit slow today, so I've been really taking my time, um, not using any discrimination, meaning just the metal detector beeps on anything, iron included. And uh, we wound up with a shoe buckle part. Jeez, it seems like everywhere I go lately, <laughs> I did shoe buckle pieces. Awesome. All right. Well, hey, maybe we'll find some more older stuff. Pretty cool. Well, I can't believe can't believe it. Maybe you can see right here. I'll turn up the camera a little bit. Right here, that shoe buckle fragment came from. Got another target. Uh, it sounded better this time, actually. Check it out. The other one to the other shoe buckle, likely. I wonder if the frames are here. Are they the same? I think they're the same. Let's see. Uh, no, they're different. Slightly. This one's a little bit more stout. Interesting. Well, maybe they tossed out their shoe buckle collection. <laughs> Or I don't know, maybe could you replace these? Maybe they just tossed out the tongue and shape and got new ones? It's a good question. But uh, we've got some iron shoe buckle fragments here. Man, that's a mystery on me. That's cool though. I, I wish, man, I'll get, I'm gonna really, really look and see if we can maybe find the frames. See if maybe we can put the sets back together again. This is a pretty cool find. It's kind of a common one, especially up here in these mountain homes. Any guesses? 
suitcase handle. Now it's a, it's a bit for a horse. Um, I say this over and over again. I, I'm not a horse person. I didn't grow up around horses. I'm not sure the name of this bit. Pretty sure a snaffle bit has a hinge in the middle, uh, and that's the only <laughs> that's the only bit that I know the name of. So, horse people, let me know the name of this particular bit. Solid, straight in the middle, two rings on either side. But that's what it is. Help you uh, steer a horse. Pretty important. Um, still in use today. Maybe not in this form, but uh, the same idea. Pretty cool. <sighs> All right. Well, I um, it was a very junky signal as they usually are, right? And it's a ring. I'm pretty sure it's a ring. It might be like a lamp part, but I'm pretty sure it's a ring. We're gonna take it out together, see what it looks like here. All right, I saw that while it was in the hole and I thought maybe it was gold, but it isn't. Um, and it's a woman's size, I assume. I might be able to get it on my pinky, but maybe it's a man size. Um, either way, you know, this holds a lot of significance for where we are. Um, it is brass and it's gold plated and I found several of these in the past. And the story goes, you know, historians are unsure whether they were buying these brass rings that were gold plated knowing full well that they were brass and paying a lower cost or if you know the jewelers were uh, pulling the wool over their eyes and selling them brass instead of gold oftentimes maybe even this one let me yeah you can see in there there's a there's a number there's an eight oftentimes they were marked as if they were real gold with the uh, you know the gold content in there you know, they say that <laughs> folks were smaller back then. I don't have the biggest hands in the world. This might fit on my ring finger if I really pushed. So this might be a man's ring. Uh, but either way, it's, you know, you have to assume it belonged to the inhabitant. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna spend a little bit longer here, but if we don't find anything else, this is a pretty good note to end the day on, I'd say. All right, folks, we're gonna call it a day. It's a pretty typical metal detecting day. A lot of the, kind of the same stuff that we always find, including that wedding band. But you know, because of the story and the research we were able to do, gives it another little layer of, of context and meaning, which makes it kind of special. We've got all the stuff here that we found uh, displayed out. Let's take a look at it all. Over here on the left, a giant piece of uh, horse tack, big buckle. A very pretty oil lamp fragment. One musket ball, very clearly rammed down with a ramrod. You can see the indentation there. Um, this, I believe, is just a piece of melted tin, or it might be aluminum, but it's a little bit too heavy for that. Uh, I, when I pulled it out, I thought for sure it was a silver coin, but Unfortunately, it is not. Shoe buckle fragments from two different shoe buckles. We have our interesting little uh, dial next to our interesting little button that I've never seen before. And we did find one little Tomback cuff button over here. Clock part, two different pieces of more than likely the same pocket watch uh, found quite a ways from each other. That's, that's never happened to me before. And then last but not least, the wedding band, um, which, as we said, holds extra significance for where we are today. Well, I hope you enjoyed. I think that maybe, I probably shouldn't say it, but I think that we're probably done with snow now for the year, hopefully. Um, like I said, it's still mid-March. You never know. In like a lamb, out like a lion. I'm optimistic we're done with snow. There's still quite a bit in the higher elevations, but we've got plenty of good places to go the elevation we're at right now. So it seems like the season has started. See you next time up here in the mountains of Vermont.